Okay, hi everyone. Uh, I'm here with Vicarion from uh, Team SK Gaming, which unfortunately lost the the minor tournament. We're going to get back on that uh, later. But first of all, you have um, how do you say a hard hard role in this team because you are replacing Fris, which was uh, a, a very which is a very very good player, and you have. Very, very few time to to prepare for uh, for this event. Can you come back with us for um, on uh, on this, please? Um, yeah. Well, uh, the team approached me because uh, Free had to go through a surgery with his hip, yeah. so uh, they knew that he would uh, be unable to play probably. So they contacted me, and when we figured out that it he would be unable to participate in this tournament, we started to play a bit. Uh, I think we had a total of eight days before traveling to play. And um, we didn't play all of the days because people are doing stuff, obviously. And um, the days we did play, we had like four or five officials where we actually won four of them. So the streak was pretty good online. And uh, we felt quite comfortable coming to the tournament. Um, but at LAN, it, it was obviously a completely different game. And uh, the lack of practice definitely showed because we were very chaotic and, and so on. Okay, Fris was the main sniper of Team SK Gaming. Your sniper too. Uh, are you the main sniper in the team now? Or is it important to have a good sniper now on Counter Strike? And is it easy to take this, uh, I don't know, this role in a, in a team without this pre a good preparation? Um, I mean, it is to a certain degree, it is uh, important to have a sniper. But you see a lot of uh, teams succeeding with also not having one. Dignitas, he had the minor playing very well. In a P, they have sometimes Forrester Pyth, but it's not like they have to have an AWP. And in terms of like how hard it is to replace um, him or like just jump into the role, it's a bit harder for me because I play very different from yeah. Freeze. Freeze is like a very passive orb and like not really missing a lot of shots and so on. And I'm the very aggressive one going for peaks and so on. So. I didn't really feel comfortable in like taking all of uh, his positions because I like to play it very different. Um, but at the end of the day, a sniper is a sniper, and yeah. <laughs> you should be able to do the the same stuff. So it's okay. It's okay. Yeah. So you did uh, the the whole game of, of the team of the team didn't change. You you say okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna play freeze position even if I'm not uh, exactly the same as him. Or did you? all change a bit and say, yeah, let's compromise. Um, well, we've seen how it's been going with Pimp and AWP, so uh, <laughs> there was no doubt that I had to play it. No, I think um, they, they pretty much knew that uh, I, would, I, I would take his positions like on all maps and so on. I think that's also one of the reasons why they approached me, even though I have been standing in for them before playing Rifle as well. Um, but yeah, I've I've played it a lot recently in in my former team preparation before Vincent left for Fnatic. I also played it all the time, so I feel comfortable with it, and and definitely it's my best role. Yeah, yeah, of course, you're a well-known sniper, <laughs> and uh, so let's speak about the the preparation for the training for the for this event. You have had a few time. I said say that a lot, mm -hmm. and uh, it's like eight day. You you said. Yeah. Uh, so you f you feel uh, confident when you when you came here because uh, you said the uh, the results online were good, but here yeah, something was missing. Yeah, you, it, it's it's a big disappointment for you. Yeah, it is. As as like shortly mentioned, everything was just way more chaotic, and we didn't have faith in our teammates, and people were making a lot of misplays in after plans and and so on, executing strategies in the wrong way. So. Everything just collapsed. It wasn't the SK that you used to see from the internet. Like even without me or with me, we should still perform better than this. We should yeah. still be able to beat teams such as Epsilon and well okay, Orbit has been playing very well. Like yeah. I'm I'm very surprised by them. They're playing really good. So watching them play now and seeing the results, I guess it's not that disappointing to lose to them, but coming coming into the event, like they had to play with Punisher instead of Dreamer and they had to play with me instead of Freeze. And we normally see them as SK as a, a better team. So in that front, it was a bit disappointing. But yeah, lack of preparation showed, as, as you pointed out, just chaos all over the place. And the communication was going crazy. And yeah, not good. Speaking about SK, it's a team, I, I don't know how to say that. It's a team we 
always want to, to see on top. We know that uh, they can, you can be on top. Uh, all the players are very, very good, very skilled, uh, skilled uh, player. But every time, it's like it's missing a little bit something. Every every single game, we're very, uh, very, very close, yeah. you know. And at the end, it missed something to to get just uh, to the victory. How, how, how do you explain that? Do do you feel that as a player? <sighs> Even if you're not in the team for all the the results. I mean, it, w it was the same when I played with them earlier, before, um, in my time in SK, so it's like we need that little thing, and what that little thing is can be a lot of things. It, it can be that extra tactic, it can be that one player who, in the most important round, kills three people. It can, it can be a lot of things, and when watching our games, it's not like we can always point and say, oh, it's that, or it's that. Yeah. Obviously, we can see some of the rounds we lose, okay, mistakes, but... As you say, often when 14-14, we lose. It's the same for Astralis. It has been the same for Dignitas. Yeah. It's just... It, it is a da Danish, yeah. Danish malediction. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's just Danish counter-strike. It's, it's just, it goes wrong, apparently. I don't know, it's, it's hard to say. Yeah, you had the, the wonderful scene with very, very strong p players, yeah. but every time you're, yeah, you're missing it. Uh, you, you're going to have it someday. someday <laughs> I, I, I hope so. <laughs> Yes, you speak about Astralis. That, that's funny because Astralis is like the most uh, known uh, Danish team. Yeah. You know, they're, they're very good. Everyone yeah. is waiting for them to win a major. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's Dinitas, there's SK Gaming. So two uh, strong teams uh, too, uh, which uh, are playing in the in the minors. Yeah. What do you feel about the minors and major systems? Uh, you know, th you're playing the the majors team. Uh, like every time in the, in the online competition, yeah. but offline there's a step, yeah. you know. And uh, do you think a team coming from a minor can uh, create a surprise in a in a major event? There's a big difference from like the major and like big tournaments because you can see a team like Gadsend they got to semi-final in Dreamhack Malmo, and here they go out of the groups at a minor. So that's like two completely different results. So they beat CLG, who is top eight in the in the major, to go to semi-final last tournament. And here they lose to Inns with the stand-in. And I mean, it's like, you know, one day they're here, one day they're down there. It's just, CS is a lot about momentum and, and having a good day. And so many teams are on an equal level at the moment. But you can see SK in the ESL Pro League, for example, doing very well and beating teams such as Navi sometimes, Virtus Pro. Yeah. These kind of teams, and then when you come to these events, like SK's land history hasn't been good. It, it, it hasn't, but they had the Sevo tournament last yeah. weekend, which was really good, and that came out of nowhere. They played the first game against Tempo Storm and was playing very bad, and uh, then they just turned everything around 2 0 Selfless, 2 0 Dignitas, 3 0 Hellraisers, and then unlucky in the final. But I mean, it, it was but, but still in the final, yeah, yeah exactly. Like, that's something they're not used to, and I, I'm not used to when I played with them either. So. I mean, that was a big and a positive surprise. Yeah, I hope there are going to be a lot of yeah. surprises. It's always, uh, always good when uh, yes. the underdogs yeah. Yeah. <laughs> is winning. Uh, let's talk about this event now. Uh, not about the results. We covered this part. <laughs> <laughs> let's get, let's get it on the side. Let's forget it. Uh, it's the second DreamHack in France. Uh, you're Danish, so I suppose you're familiar with the Swedish yeah. DreamHack, uh, which are are the big ones. Uh, what do you feel about this one? Uh, do you get that feeling? You know, the, the DreamHack feeling? I'm actually surprised. There is a lot of people. I think yeah. like 6,000 or something, maybe more. I don't know the number, but there's a lot of people. I mean, I think DreamHacks in Sweden are just something special. No, yeah. yeah. I, I, it, I went to winter. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's wonderful. Crazy. <laughs> exactly. It's crazy. And, and you know, the good thing about those events is that so many people have their own computers, you know? It just creates this environment that like every gamer is sitting at a big event, but they're also kind of sitting at home because that's what DreamHack is supposed to be. And this is more, I feel like, uh, boots, you know, and uh, tournaments, and it's a bit different, but I really like the atmosphere here. People are really nice, and there's a lot of people. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we hear the heroes of the storm crowd, and they're going <laughs> crazy, so that's pretty cool. 
Um, but I mean, yeah, it, it, it's a it's a cool tournament, and I said it's second time they're here. Um, I always thought that it was called Dreamhack Tours because it was like Dreamhack going on tours to different yeah. places. But tours, know. but tours <laughs> no, is the city. It's, it's the place. It's a, yeah, it's yeah. the place. So I was a bit surprised there, but uh, it's great. It's a really nice city. Yeah, it's nice. Uh, last year, last year was good too, and uh, the difference between last year and this year. Uh, last year, the Bio tournament uh, qualified two teams for the. It wasn't minor yet. Uh, I, I don't remember. Yeah. For, but for the main event, yeah. you know, the, the DreamHack Open event. And this year, there's the minors and the Bayok. Do you think it's... Um, I, I know there's a lot of French team where I kind uh, of disappointed for that because like we are, we have pl we are players last uh, up up there you know because <laughs> because the bioc is up there and uh, last year they won the bioc mm -hmm. and they played versus fnatic and they were like kids you know with yeah, stars yeah. in their eyes and they're missing a bit that uh, you know so the the shiny moment yeah. i think that it's the the bioc system is really good and um, it's something that more tournaments should have. Like, let people come and try and let the best of them play. Get the one or two spots in the groups for it. Definitely better than some of the invites sometimes because sometimes uh, also the qualifiers, it's just it's a mess sometimes. You know, so many qualifiers every day, every week, like all the time. And I think the only reason why they don't have a buy expert here is because it's, it's the minor, you know. It's like, it's in a bigger system you know it's yeah. like you know you go to the minor you go to the offline qualifier you go to the major so it's like you can't just like give out a free spot to like come to the tournament but i think that they should try and work on having some dreamhack events my first international LAN was uh, dreamhack 2013 where we came from the bayak and qualified for the first major the dreamhack winter one yeah. where we beat mouse boards and vox emina in the in the bayak and we were no namers no yeah. one heard about i know them. i was there yeah. <laughs> I, uh, and like we came out of nowhere and without that, maybe I would have not, like, I joined Mouse Balls after that because of that tournament. And it just kickstarts everything. Sometimes I also remember last DreamHack here in Tours. Yeah. I think it was Platinum who nearly beat Titan or something. Like, they were very close. And, I mean, these teams can upset. They can do something. And as we can see sometimes with SK, online and LAN is different. So some, maybe some of the French sub-teams is like, they're okay online, but maybe they're crazy good on land. Who knows, you know? So it's definitely a good idea. Yeah, it's a nice, nice answer. <laughs> uh, speaking of the Platinum, uh, they went uh, to LDLC, then uh, LDLC White. They did quite good performance. Yeah. And uh, both uh, two players from, from that team joined uh, both G2 and NVS. Yeah. Uh, what do you think about the French scene now? We see uh, NVS having uh, kind of rough time, uh, kind of hard time. Uh, G2 did a quite good game versus Fnatic yesterday. Yeah. Uh, do you think those French teams with uh, Body and Devil can uh, can still do something in the major level? Hmm. It's kind of hard because I don't know Body and Devil that well. But they're good. Yeah, they're good. They're but good. Say they're I've good. Told, maybe you can answer. <laughs> for, from yeah. what I've been told, Body is maybe a little better than Devil. I don't know. Is it true? They're different player. They're, they're very different player. Uh, Devil was a player which two years ago, mm -hmm. no one knows his name. Two years ago, he was posting on Vacarm, mm -hmm. our, our website, for, hey guys, I'm looking for a team. And now he's playing with Envious, mm -hmm. you know. He's a fast learner, a very, very yeah. fast learner. But he's also a young player, but he is too. But he's a more polyvalent player. Um, so I, I don't know which one's the best, but. I thought I thought maybe Tuinu was the best from that team, but obviously he plays Sniper and yeah. Envias has Kenyes and G2 has Smiths. So I guess there was not really a room for him, but I think that Tuinu yeah. out there, you're really good. I think you're a really good player. So Yeah, he, he missed the bio. Okay. <laughs> he, 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 yeah, he, he went to the bio uh, in a mix, and but he didn't go out of from the groups. <coughs> yeah, but it, uh, I know the feeling. I know the <laughs> feeling. I know the feeling. <laughs> okay, let's uh, end it with a, a quick question about you. Uh, you are replacing Frizz. Uh, what's gonna happen when Frizz gonna go back on SK? Do you have uh, any yeah. proposition? Yeah, um, we qualified for the Star Ladder yeah. by beating Cisco Lounge uh, when I played with him. So uh, he w he's gonna play with them 
for Stalotter, which is okay. next week. So uh, he's back uh, very fast, actually. So yeah. Yeah, nice. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, well, thank you for your time. I'm gonna let you have a last word if you want. Thank you for everyone watching this. I'm actually I'm reading a lot on Vacom because you oh, do these nice. video posts and uh, frag highlights and sometimes. So yeah, just uh, thank you for watching and uh, have a good day. Yeah, thank you. Still disappointed for your results, but I hope you see you on top very very fast. Bye guys, uh, bye guys. Sorry, sorry for my French accent. I know everyone's gonna troll me about that, but uh, we are happy to have some uh, finally some interview from the the miners. So hi guys, and see you on vacam.net.